Hi, thanks for tuning in and I'm Leslie, a sports physiotherapist. So today what we're going to be talking about is knee pain. Um, there are two types of knee pain that is the most common. And the first one is called runner's knee. So what runner's knee is, is basically inflammation of the patella or the kneecap as it rubs along the bone itself. So you can imagine if this is a knee, when you're climbing up or down stairs or jogging, as the knee moves, okay, as you go up and down the stairs, there's a lot of grinding and, and pressure between the posterior surface or the back surface of the patella or the kneecap and the actual uh, cartilage here. All right? So you can just visualize that rubbing and for various reasons, maybe for you know, weight gain or overtraining, some people do get a lot of inflammation or a lot of wear and tear in this area. So that's called runner's knee, the most common type of uh, knee pain there is. The second type of knee pain is called jumper's knee and what this is is slightly different. Basically, this tendon here is what connects the kneecap or the patella to the tibia. Okay, So this tendon is called um, the patella tendon and some, some individuals do get a, like acute inflammation of this tendon and that's called jumper's knee. So again, if you visualize yourself running, uh, running or going up and down stairs, okay? now as you go up and down, you can just see that tendon being stretched and shortened. Okay? And this cycle, repetitive cycle, again for various reasons, weight gain, okay? um, increase in training, um, you can get acute inflammation of this tendon and that's called jumper's knee. Now runner's knee, jumper's knee, two separate pro problems and there are two strategies to go about treating these injuries. So for runner's knee, what are the different strategies we can do to counter this problem? Now the first thing to recognize is that most runner's knee, okay, or uh, sometimes called patellofemoral pain syndrome, okay, most runner's knees is often caused by a very tight muscle along the side of your thigh called the iliotibial band or the iliotibial tract. Sometimes they call it the ITB for short. And you can see this uh, muscle, actually it's not really a muscle, it's, it's more like connective tissue that joins the hip to the side of the knee. And these fibers, as you can see in this photo, actually blends down and into the actual kneecap itself. So when it's tight, you can visualize it pulling on the knee, on the kneecap itself, okay, and adding more pressure okay, to this already painful region. So, what can we do about the iliotibial band? First thing we can do is simple massage. So for massage, the best position to be in is lying sideways such as this. If you notice, I put a thick towel between the knees, okay, and the leg that's on top, the leg that you're going to massage, okay, just drop it in front like that. Okay, now, you need to grab someone to give you a hand, um, and you can use any cream you like, moisturizing cream, massage oil, whichever you prefer. And just put it on the skin itself. And then grabbing your assistance, okay, um, just get someone to use their forearm and basically just push downwards. Alright, now you can push upwards as well, but usually it's a little bit more painful. So you can start with downwards first, okay, and of course the, the more pain you can tolerate, okay, the better. And um, there's nothing really uh, sensitive about this area, okay, in terms of you can't really push too hard and damage something, right? Because you know, there's no major blood vessels or nerves running along the side of the thigh. Okay, so the more pain that you can tolerate, the better, and the longer that you can tolerate it, the better. Most people, to begin with, they might only start with, let's say, two minutes or five minutes, but um, this is really effective for basically loosening up the IT band, okay? Much more effective than lots of stretches that, you know, you may have come across for the IT band. Okay, so massage is really the way to go, right? And I can guarantee most professional athletes Tennis players, basketball players would get this done, okay, at least once a week, really, and uh, it's so effective. All right, now, if you don't have someone to help you do this at home, you can use something called a trigger ball. So the trigger ball is this device that basically has lots of spikes on it, and um, you can use a tennis ball as a substitute, but really, a trigger ball is the way to go. So how do we use a trigger ball for the IT band? Our model here is going to show us. So from this position, again, you can do this either in bed or on the floor. So uh, Mario, we're going to get her to lie down. Now if you notice, you'll be resting on the elbow itself, okay? And just for comfort's sake, use a thick towel and put it underneath the hip, okay? So just for a little bit of leverage, right? And uh, the knee that you, the leg that you're going to be using the trigger ball on is the one that's, okay, underneath, closest to the floor. So all you need to do is put the trigger ball under the IT band like that, okay, and rest down, 
okay? And basically, you're just getting your body weight on top of the trigger ball. And you don't